Uber has proposed a $21 an hour minimum wage, but are they really gonna pay $21 an hour? In this video, we're gonna break down the numbers and show you exactly what Uber would be paying you under this new minimum wage because it's not exactly the $21 an hour that they're advertising. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jonathan, this is Gig Nation, and I cover everything related to the gig economy and rideshare. All right, so I'm gonna pull up the article here. There's actually a couple of them. The first one I'm gonna pull up is in the Washington Post, and it really just says it like it is. Uber is claiming that they're kind of petitioning for a $21 an hour minimum wage, but when you do the math, it's not quite that much. So in a minute here, I'm gonna kind of explain why it's gonna be much less than $21 an hour. And let's take a little bit of more of a look at this article here. Now, as we scroll down, we can see that there's actually more than just that $21 an hour minimum. There's actually a couple of benefits. So Uber is also saying that they're gonna give some paid time off, some sick leave, and they're gonna kinda of help you out if you get injured while you're on the job. And these are definitely some nice perks, something that you know I'm glad that Uber is talking about, uh, but we still have to dive more into this and break down the numbers because it's not quite as good as what it seems. Uber is definitely doing a little bit here to negotiate with drivers to you know kinda of help bump that perceived pay at least, but what exactly are they going to be paying? So this $21 an hour minimum wage isn't just $21 an hour, you know, for eight hours a day that you're deciding that you want to set aside to drive for Uber. It's $21 an hour uh, for the time that you actually spend driving in the app. So you have to be on a trip. If you just dropped off a passenger and, you know, you're looking for that next ride, you're not actually getting compensated at that $21 an hour. So this hourly minimum is just on trip or when you're heading to pick up a passenger and estimates come in here that you're actually spending 30 to 40% of your time as downtime waiting for a ride as an Uber driver. So it, you know, it really chalks out to be closer to $15 an hour, maybe even less than that. And that is before expenses. And you know, if you know anything about driving for Uber, these really depend on what type of car you have, how much you pay for gas, uh, what type of maintenance you pay for if you do it yourself. So you can really be looking at a ton less then that number, you know, after all expenses come into play here. So what are some other places that, you know, we've seen a minimum wage be proposed for Uber and Lyft? Well, there's actually a couple examples and, you know, the more popular one, the one that you've probably heard more about is New York City, and they've actually implemented some different minimum wages over there uh, because drivers have kind of collectively pushed for that. And it's definitely necessary. You know, New York City is a very expensive place to live. So if you're not making a good amount of money, uh, you really just can't afford to be anywhere near New York City. And also, you know, another place that recently came up was El Monte, California, and they actually voted for a $30 an hour minimum wage. And a lot of people, a lot of rideshare drivers especially, are saying that this minimum wage needs to be $30 everywhere because $21 an hour, you know, as we looked at earlier, is more like $15 an hour, and that's pre-expenses. So $30 an hour might be that number that it takes to get you you know, closer to that 15, uh, you know, after all the expenses are factored in here. And there's been quite a bit of chatter about this petition. The real reason for it was because the new AB5 bill is up. And, uh, you know, if you've been following the rideshare industry, you know that AB5 is a bill that's kind of gone up to the Senate in California. And basically it would classify uh, independent contractors in the rideshare industry and the gig economy as full-time workers because there's what's called an ABC test. And essentially you have to pass uh, you know, a series, uh, there's a series of di like different questions that kind of apply. And, you know, if you're not doing that type of work outside of the app, outside of Lyft or Uber, then all of a sudden you have to be a full-time worker because normal people who are independent contractors have multiple uh, companies that they work for and they're doing that type of work in a bunch of different places. Now there's also a, a couple of other different tests that you have to pass there. But long story short, this new bill would classify uh, all drivers as full-time employees. Now this would really hurt the business model of Lyft and Uber, and it actually probably wouldn't be viable because Lyft and Uber already lose so much money. Uh, Uber, it's billions of dollars. And so if all of a sudden they don't have that flexibility of independent contractor status, it really just makes it look like Uber and Lyft aren't gonna be around much longer. So this is uh, very important to them. Obviously they're fighting uh, as much as they can to try and get AB5 reversed to make it not go any further, obviously to not uh, have the bill implemented. And that's why this petition kind of came to be. So there's a couple different voices, a couple different opinions uh, that have been heard, you know, since this petition for $21 an hour uh, was released. And, uh, you know, one of them was, uh, you know, the gig workers 
a lot of gig workers, at least the ones that want to do this full time, feel that that $21 an hour is not enough. Uh, if you do the math on it, uh, you know, other than just the 30 to 40 percent downtime, what you really get uh, with $21 an hour, if you divide that by 60 minutes, it adds up to be about 35 cents a minute. So if you want to check yourself what this means for you and your wages, uh, you can really do it pretty easily. You just find the trip total and how much time you spent in driver mode during that trip. Divide the total by driver mode, and if it comes out to be below 35 cents, you would actually uh, have substituted uh, that 35 cents in there for your uh, minute rate. So it definitely comes out to be a boost in that case. But what you're going to find in a lot of cases is that uh, that 35 cents per minute, you're actually exceeding that a lot of times, and that's because if you're doing Lyft or Uber, you know, part time, if you're being very selective about what hours you drive, just doing it here and there as a side hustle, you can easily hit those money. You can easily hit those numbers by doing it at the right time. And that's where the second voice comes to play. And you know, a lot of people do think that um, all drivers, um, you know, agree with AB5, but not all drivers do. There are actually some people in the gig economy, some people that drive for Lyft and Uber that do want to do this part time. They want to do it as a side hustle. And they understand the economics that if you uh, unionize drivers and you try and create too high of minimum wages that the whole system fails and now this uh, side hustle that they had is no longer a thing so they're kind of losing something good that is a legitimate opinion i'm not an uber representative i'm not paid by uber i don't do uber driver referrals uh, and uber is you know kind of coming out and they are trying to create a website called the independent driver which is not an independent website in any way shape or form it's a very biased website and it's supposed to kind of create a collective uh, opinion of drivers who think that the rideshare economy is good for independent contractors. It's a good side hustle. And I honestly don't like this. I don't like that Uber is trying to create it. If independent contractors felt that strongly about it, they would create it themselves. And I do feel very strongly um, uh, for drivers who want to do this full time, want to find full time compensation and want to be treated fairly like real people. You obviously uh, should feel that way. So there's a lot of different opinions coming to play here. Uh, and at the end of the day, um, we'll kind of see how it shakes out in California. Obviously, California is a very liberal, liberal place. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, more uh, socialized regulations kind of take place here and start in California and then spread throughout the rest of the country. So it'll be interesting to see if this uh, petition, if this negotiation play by Uber is enough to stop AB5 or if it kind of continues to gain momentum and materialize. Now go ahead and let me know uh, what you think in the comment section below. Obviously, uh, I expect there to be a lot of very um, passionate opinions on both sides. So I'd love to hear from you guys, you know, what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel.